So I'm Brian Kennedy, I'm President and CEO of the Buck Institute for Research on Aging in uh, the Bay Area in California. Um, my research over the years has been aimed at understanding the basic pathways that govern aging using animal models, uh, everything from yeast cells to worms and flies and mice. Um, and I think that uh, the field has learned a lot in the time I've been doing those studies. Uh, we used to think it was going to be very hard to extend lifespan genetically by making a mutation in a single gene. And yet we found that in, in the simple models at least it's very easy. Uh, we've, for instance, screened the whole yeast genome for knockouts that extend lifespan and over 300 different gene knockouts cause lifespan extension in the replicative aging model. And that's certainly true in worms as well where lots of people have done RNAi screens and found hundreds of genes. Uh, more recently we've been uh, knocking out genes in mice and as well as the rest of the field and have been uh, surprised to find that lots of different genes extend lifespan in mice. So it turns out that it may be easier to extend lifespan in these uh, models than we thought and that possibly could extend to humans. I think one of the key questions is whether uh, lifespan extension also equates to health span extension because this is something that we really care about. We want to keep people healthy longer. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we're trying to do are very good functional assays of aging, mostly using mouse models with these genetic, uh, genetic models. Much of my work is now in the TOR pathway, uh, and partly that's because there's a drug, rapamycin, uh, which inhibits uh, the TOR complex, and that act extends lifespan dramatically. So we're trying to understand what it is about rapamycin that uh, uh, and the TOR pathway that affects aging and how we can improve rapamycin to get the benefits, the health span extension without the uh, problems which are the, the side effects like um, uh, uh, metabolic side effects uh, and mucositis and some of the other uh, things that make it hard to give this drug to humans. Uh, I think more broadly though what we're finding is that now we're starting to look for small molecules and drugs that affect aging. Uh, and we're finding something similar to the genetics, which is that there are probably a number of different drugs that affect aging, at least in a mouse. Uh, and we're working on a number of those in the lab. So I think we're entering an era where we can actually begin to think about trying to extend health span directly as opposed to uh, targeting one disease at a time. And right now, my focus is on trying to do everything possible to make that uh, uh, possibility or reality. So we're trying to work with different drugs and small molecules like rapamycin and others to uh, get them ready for clinical testing and also to screen and find new drugs. Uh, it's an exciting time to be in aging research because I think we're finally at a point where we can look at actual interventions in humans uh, with the goal of extending human health span and, and I'm excited to be a part of that.